Man-made climate change is, according to most scientists, happening now. Leading climate experts also agree that nations have to drastically reduce emissions of greenhouse gases released from fossil fuels and need to stop cutting the forests that absorb carbon dioxide. But the world seems to be moving in the opposite direction. The challenge today is how countries can improve living standards without wrecking the planet. In Climate Challenge, we scour the world for promising schemes and new technologies, both global and local, that might make a difference. While scientists, pressure groups and politicians wrangle over targets and treaties, ordinary people are coming up with practical means to improve energy efficiency, save money and contribute towards climate stability. These have all been recognised by the Ashton Awards for Sustainable Energy, which reward and champion proven energy ideas round the world. In Climate Challenge, this time, we go to the home front and see how rich and poor households across the planet are trying to save money and reduce damage to the environment. In Shanxi, China, a group of mothers concerned about deforestation are building a biogas system. The northerly town of Huddersfield in the UK is the unlikely venue for a solar power success story. In Cambodia, a redesign of the traditional cooking stove is cutting the demand for charcoal. And Pune, India, could be witnessing an energy revolution, making gas for cooking from household waste. Yan'an in China's Shanxi province. The country's economic boom has passed the rural areas by. For farmers, wood is still the main fuel source. Demand for fuel wood has long since outstripped ready supply. The traditional way of life and farming practices such as overplowing and using wood as fuel for cooking has resulted in serious soil erosion and the destruction of the environment. In 1997, with the authorities' blessing, a group of women formed the Shanxi Volunteer Mothers' Association for Environmental Protection. The Mothers' Association supported an official reforestation programme that began 10 years ago. But even fast-growing trees couldn't grow fast enough to meet household needs. Choices were stark. Fell the last of the mature forest in remote enclaves and spend more of a meagre household budget on sulphurous coal, or come up with a doorstep alternative. I have to get firewood from far away, and then I have to cook. It's horrible, and each time there is a lot of smoke, and it's not good for my lungs and throat. It really is awful. <laughs> So for the women, there was no time to waste. In order to help the farmers to reduce poverty and at the same time to help the environment, we started a project which was called the 4-in-1 system so that we could use biogas for energy. The system designed in Shanxi province captures methane from rotting waste. Its combustion produces carbon dioxide, which is at least 20 times less damaging to the atmosphere than methane. It's estimated that a household which replaces fuel wood with biogas saves up to two tons of wood a year, equivalent to three entire trees. The use of biogas has been shown to cut carbon monoxide levels in the home by about 74%. This is the general structure of the biogas pit. It's got four parts. This is the material inlet. Human waste comes from the toilet and the animal waste from the piggery. All this enters the fermentation chamber. This is the major part of the biogas pit, where the waste from humans and animals turns into biogas. Then there's a pipe which leads the gas to the kitchen for people to use. The slurry can be used for fertilizer for trees. I never thought that raw human waste could be used for cooking or lighting, and it has no smell at all. 
，又没味儿，没那啥蒸汽，我原先就塞了烂的柴火，烧火。I used to go far to collect firewood and spent a lot of money purchasing coal. Since using biogas, I am able to cook straight after working in the fields. It is very convenient and doesn't take too much time. A spin-off is that the byproduct slurry can be used as a fertilizer for crops and fruit trees. Since using biogas, I have the slurry and use it to fertilize these vines. It's much more effective than the artificial fertilizer I used before. It helps the vines grow faster and to produce more grapes. What we've done has been very successful, so we are planning to expand what we've done for the tree planting and training to the rural and urban communities and also increase the number of houses in rural areas with biogas. This is cheaper, cleaner, healthier energy, which is environmentally friendly and sustainable. The farmers will love it. The farmers may love it, but this biogas system is limited to a rural setting and is no answer for China's increasingly urban population. <laughs>